Last time, we ended off with the rebels taking down most of the Ginyu Force. The only surviving member is Captain Ginyu, who was left to guard the Dragon Balls while Frieza tried to figure out how to summon the dragon. So, while he was away, Captain Ginyu realized his men were dead since he could no longer sense them on his scouter. From there, he hid the Dragon Balls and started to fly towards where he got the power rating of the rebels, which brings us up to where we left off, as Captain Ginyu lands in front of the rebel forces. Though, there is something I forgot to mention that would have happened between the defeat of the rest of the Ginyu force and the arrival of Captain Ginyu. The Saiyans would have picked up on Frieza going towards Grand Elder Moris, so they would realize that the Dragon Balls were left unguarded. So, they would split up, with Nappa, Yurin, and Chaoji going after the Dragon Balls, while Kakarot, Raditz, and Vegeta stay behind to fight Captain Ginyu. Though, something they have to worry about is how they will get Frieza away from the Grand Elder, since if Frieza gets there, He'll likely kill him. Their current plan is just to cause a distraction that will lead the Frieza away from there. Anyway, back with where Captain Ginyu landed in front of Kakarot, Raditz, and Vegeta. Even though separately their powers are less than Captain Ginyu's, whose power level is 120,000, together they are able to overwhelm him. Though, when the fight starts out 1v1 against Kakarot, he would be losing, but it would be a close fight. As much as he hates to admit it, he would need help from Raditz and Vegeta so he lets them fight alongside him. This is when the fight starts to turn against Captain Ginyu, as he can't accurately keep track of all three Saiyans and starts to get beaten down. In the meantime, as Frieza is on his way to the Grand Elders, the other three realize they need to cause a distraction somehow. Even though Nappa is slightly weaker than Yurin, he would step up to face Frieza, since out of the three of them he is the one most fed up with Frieza's rule. So, he speeds off toward the Tyrant, trying to get there before he can kill the Grand Elder. He knows he doesn't stand a chance against Frieza, but they have to distract him somehow, and as Kakarot said, he can be revived with the Dragon Balls from Earth if he dies. When Nappa first arrives, he just punches Frieza in the face, which is a shock to the tyrant, as he wasn't paying attention to his scouter to notice Nappa, since he was more worried about his wish. With Nappa's power level being only 28,000, he doesn't stand a chance, but he's mainly just trying to buy time. So, when the fight does start, it's a losing match from the get-go. However, Nappa does have one thing that he can try that would buy more time than Nail was able to. We don't know for sure, but I don't see why Nappa wouldn't have been able to make an artificial moon like Vegeta did on Earth. Though, when he does make it, so he doesn't interfere in the fight with Ginyu, he only sets it high enough so that just Yi can see it. This brings his power up to 280,000, which is still less than first for Frieza, but he lasts longer than Nail did. However, much like Nail, at the end of the fight he is lying near death. Back with Captain Ginyu, as the fight goes on, since he is getting overwhelmed by the three Saiyans, he starts to get weaker. Eventually, he gets to a point where he can't even land a hit on any of the three Saiyan warriors. When he gets a brief moment in, he throws his scouter down to the ground and mortally injures himself, which just confuses the Saiyans. This, of course, gives him the opening he needed, so he switches body with the strongest of the three, which is Kakarot. In the manga slash anime, Ginyu and Goku's body initially only had a power of about 23,000 at first. Since Kakarot is stronger than Goku in the series was, Ginyu would be a little stronger in Kakarot's body, with a power of about 28,000. In the confusion, Ginyu goes and gets his scouter back and takes off towards Frieza's ship. As for Shaoji and Yurin at Frieza's ship, they would have already gotten the Dragon Balls. Since in Ginyu's shock of all his men dying, he forgot to bury them. So, they take the Dragon Balls and fly off towards where they sense Vegeta and the others. Though, once they arrive, they're shocked to see Ginyu instead of Kakarot, so they're filled in on what happens. From there, they hide the Dragon Balls and decide to chase after Ginyu to get Kakarot's body back. When they land where Ginyu is again, he's in the middle of freaking out because all the Dragon Balls are gone. However, all the Saiyans, minus Kakarot since he collapsed from the injuries to Ginyu's body, click we start to wail on him, and with his lower power level, he doesn't stand a chance. Much like the manga, he's eventually beaten into a crater, and as Vegeta charges at him, he tries to switch bodies with the Saiyan Prince. However, with the last bit of Kakarot's strength, he jumps in front of the beam and switched back into his body. From there, instead of giving him the chance to switch again, Vegeta blasts away from Captain Ginyu and kills him, like he did to Jace in the manga. At this point, they could give a Sensu Bean to Kakarot to heal him. You'd probably be questioning why they had Sensu Beans, but with their power, when they were on Earth they easily could have forced Korin to give them some since it was either give the sensu beans or die and the sensu beans were taken anyway. So, instead of having to wait for Kakarot to be healed, they can heal him instantly. Also, 
Green and Shalji would take this since you'd be in a good to find Nappa, just in the likely case if he needs healed. Once they do find Nappa barely clinging to life, they give him the Sensu Bean. From both Kakarot's and Nappa's near-death experiences, their powers would have gone up greatly. Though, I'll give Kakarot a boost similar to the one Goku got after the fight with Ginyu in the manga, and I'll give Nappa a boost similar to what Vegeta got after being defeated on Earth. I'm mainly only giving Nappa a smaller boost like this since Kakarot is still the protagonist, regardless of if he's evil or not. Anyway, on Earth, Vegeta's power went from 18,000 to 24,000, so Nappa's power would go from 28,000 to 37,000. As for Kakarot's, in the manga after Goku left the healing pod, his power went from 90,000 to 3 million. So, with a similar boost, Kakarot's power goes from 109,000 to about 3,600,000. When Frieza eventually arrives back at his ship, he is furious to say the least. Not long after Frieza arrives though, Raditz and Nappa would arrive as well, which would make Frieza curious, as he was a sure he left him to die, though he'd say something like, no matter, I can easily take out you pitiful monkeys. Regardless, once the fight starts between all of them, Frieza in his first form is at a disadvantage. If you take their combined powers into consideration, the Rebels' power would add up to about 3,800,000, though Vegeta would still taunt Frieza to transform, as he would say Zarkon told him that Frieza can. In his second form, Frieza has a power of about 1,060,000, so he is still struggling to fight against the Saiyans, especially when they team up on them. Though, even if they weren't teaming up, Kakarot would still beat down Frieza in this form. So, as Frieza is eventually getting pummeled, he tells him that he has two more transformations. Since all the Saiyans there strive for a good fight, they let him transform into his third form, which, this brings Frieza up to a power level of about 1,590,000. So he is still losing, even if he fares a little bit better. When Frieza eventually powers up to his final form, initially he would only have a power of 2 million, though he'd have to power up to about 3.33% of his full power, so he is outmatching their combined power levels. So, Frieza would start to toy around with them at this point, until he eventually gets bored and starts to try to pick them off quickly, starting with Vegeta, then Raditz, and then Nappa again. Though, Kirin and Shaoji would use the last of the Sensu Beans they have to heal the three Saiyan warriors. For their power boost, I made it about half of the one Vegeta got on Namek after Dende healed him, since they are stronger than they were in the, that timeline, and so they don't surpass the protagonist, Kakarot. With this power boost, Raz's power is 2,900,000, Vegeta's is about 2,100,000, and Nappa's is 1,200,000, which, when taking Green's power of 30,000 and Shaoji's power of 14,000 into consideration, Rebels now have a combined power of 9,844,000. For Frieza to outclass this, he goes up to about 10% of his full power, or 12 million. Frieza is getting extremely bored of this, but is also a little worried about how much stronger they have gotten. So, if he sees any of them attempt to use the power ball, he will likely kill them on the spot. Regardless of that, though, he still does start killing them off one by one, starting with Nappa, so he can finally get rid of the brute. And after that, Frieza would take out Vegeta, as he is tired of the prince and his ramblings about the Super Saiyan. Vegeta would still give a speech about Kakarot being the best hope for defending the Saiyan race, though. Then lastly, of the original group of Saiyans, he takes out Raditz, which this one would get to Kakarot even more, since it's his brother. Though, this wouldn't push him over the edge of going Super Saiyan, but his boost and power from being enraged catches Frieza off guard at first. Though so after a while, Frieza powers up and knocks him away. However, that was interesting to Frieza, that when he killed a family member of this Saiyan, he got enraged and stronger, so while Kakarot is down, he decides to pick off either Yurin or Shalji, and chooses to kill Shalji in the same way he killed Krillin, by using a death psycho bomb to cause him to explode. This is what really angers Kakarot, as the ground starts to shake beneath him. All around the same warrior, lightning starts to strike, just barely missing him. Frieza just watches on while chuckling and talks about killing the girl next. Eventually, the water starts to get more violent on Nanak while the ground starts to crumble around his feet. Once his hair starts turning from black to yellow, Frieza does start to get worried about what's happening, but after the transformation finishes, which means he is now a Super Saiyan, he tells Serene to get the bodies of the others and get away from there. Also, this puts Kakarot's power level at about 180 million. When she starts to fly away, Frieza goes to kill her, but Kakarot still gets in the way and grabs his arm, though, with Kakarot being much more ruthless than in canon and him having less control of his anger here, he doesn't just let go. When we see him just crush Frieza's hand in the manga, this time he breaks Frieza's arm and just rips it off, like how Frieza ripped Nail's arm off. Though, unlike Nail, 
Frieza can't just throw it back and would be in extreme agony this time around. This doesn't mean Kakarot is going to ease up on him though. Oh no. He would be delighted in this and would start to wail on Frieza even more. Even when Frieza gets to his full power of 120 million, since the gap in power is even wider, it's nowhere close to as close of a fight as it was in the manga. Kakarot is easily dominating in this fight, and he doesn't even give Frieza the chance to use a death ball to try and destroy Namek. As the fight goes on, and with the strain from Frieza's full power, he starts getting weaker and weaker. When Frieza still tries his death saucer, even though Kakarot's anger is greater this time around, he is still able to trick Frieza to the point he is sliced by his own attack. Which, since Frieza already lost an arm earlier, and this takes his other arm in his legs, he is completely limbless. Though, once Frieza starts begging Kakarot for help, he doesn't receive the kind of help he wanted. The kind of help Kakarot gives him is ending him once and for all, by blasting him with a Kamehameha, which ends off the Galactic Pirate forever. From there, Kakarot falls out of the Super Saiyan form, and tries to think about how he will revive the others. There's a Dragon Ball from Namek, but he doesn't have any idea on if the Grand Elder would even let him use them, since he isn't exactly a good person. It's his best chance, however, so it goes to Mori and tries to convince him to use the Dragon Balls to revive his family. The only possible way Kakarot is allowed to use it is if he wishes to revive the other Namekians, which he does agree to, since it's worth getting his son and brother back in exchange for the life of the Namekians. So, Kakarot takes Mori with him to where they bury the Dragon Balls, and they summon Kronga. Since Kronga can't revive more than one person at a time, which I found out by trying to wish back all the people killed by Frieza and his men, Kakarot tells Mori he'll wish the Namekians back if he has Dragon Balls. In the meantime, he wishes Shalji, Raditz, and Vegeta back with the three wishes, and they prepare to leave for Earth. Once they get there, they gather the Earth Dragon Balls and Kakarot keeps his promise to revive the Namekians, as he wishes for everyone that was killed by Frieza and his men to be revived. This way, Nappa is revived as well. They brought Nappa's body with them to Earth, that way he would be revived there. Anyway, now that Frieza is taken down, Vegeta suggests they take over Frieza's empire and become the rulers of the galaxy, which, the other Saiyans would be fine with this, as they would want to fight stronger people, though there are two main problems standing in the way of taking over Frieza's empire, which, these two problems are King Cold and Cooler, as they aren't going to take the death of Frieza lying down. King Cold would have eventually figured Frieza died on Namek when he no longer heard back from his son. Since they would have heard everything through the Scouters too, it isn't hard to piece together that Frieza was killed by the Sands. So, King Cold contacts Cooler, which since Cooler is stronger than Frieza was, he believes Cooler can take on the Sands and tells him to go to Earth. King Cold also departs for Earth as well, so he and Cooler will both arrive on the planet around the same time. Which, that's where I'm going to be leaving this part for right now. With Frieza out of the picture and Cooler on the way to Earth, do you think the Saiyans will be able to take him down? Even if they do, will they be able to take down King Cold as well? Will the other Saiyans be able to become a Super Saiyan as well? Though, assuming they somehow take down both Tyrants and take control of Frieza's Empire, what would they do from there? As always, if you want to see more in the future, please like the video and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions for this what if or others, please comment down below, as I am open to suggestions.